In Gnosticism, Sophia is essentially the feminine aspect of God. She is seen as the divine spark. Now, the divine spark is, of course, the, the portion of God that's seen within every person. As we talked about in Gnosticism, the return to the Pleroma, we can return to the Pleroma through the light in one's soul. The light in one's soul is what returns back to the Pleroma. And it's something that the Demiurge uh, despises people for because all people have this divine spark or light in them, uh, but the Demiurge cannot. So the Demiurge can never return to the Pleroma in the same way that humans can through, through Sophia, the divine spark. Now, Sophia is essentially the a combination of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit uh, and Christ. So she's a syzygy of those two things. On the Tree of Life, she's often represented by the Shakma or the wisdom on the tree of life near the right at the near the top of the the tree of life just below the the keter and across from bana bana is of course understanding so right at the top of the tree of life you have the keter or crown and then to the to the left you have understanding and to the right you have wisdom now the keter or crown is generally symbolized by emptiness uh it's beyond any binaries and descriptions a good way to think of Keter, it, to me at least, is, is in terms of the Buddhist Enzo circle. So we've all seen uh, pictures of the Buddhist Enzo circle. It's essentially the, the circle drawn by Buddhists with a calligraphy brush that essentially isn't quite touching uh, at the end. So it's a slightly incomplete circle. But inside the, the Enzo, of course, uh, is yin and yang, uh, binaries and opposites that are unified. Thus, it goes beyond uh, dualities, it goes beyond binaries, and it cannot be described because it's essentially empty. So a good way to think of Keter or Crown on the Tree of Life, I, I think, is, is in those uh, Enzo-like uh, Buddhist terms. Now, because the Shakma or Wisdom is below the Keter or Crown, it shows that Wisdom essentially comes from emptiness. Wisdom comes from emptiness, which may seem odd, but in a Gnostic way, it's, it's really not odd at all because the Gnostic tradition doesn't it views the the material world as kind of something corrupt or evil made by the the demiurge so we want the immaterial right in the gnostic sense so wisdom comes from emptiness makes a lot of sense especially in relation to sophia and her fall uh from the the pleroma and how she created essentially the the demiurge so from that we get wisdom from from emptiness it's a it's a neat little neat little uh, idea um, but Sophia is the lowest aeon, right? She does accidentally birth the Demiurge uh, into creation. He creates the material world. So in the Gnostic tradition, Christ uh, and the Pistis Sophia, right? Christ is essentially sent to earth to give man the knowledge or the gnosis, right? The gnosis knowledge is meant to give man the knowledge or gnosis through the logos, as we talked about, so they can escape the material world and return to the immaterial world, okay? So that's essentially what what, what Christ in the, the Gnostic tradition uh, does to help man return to the Pleroma. Now, wisdom is, is mentioned, interestingly, in Proverbs 9.1, wisdom uh, hath builded her house, she hath hewn out of seven pillars, and seven's very important, as, as we discussed. In the Gnostic tradition, the seven circles of the hermaphroditic archons, so the archons are the principalities or rulers of the quote unquote seven planets. Now the seven planets are essentially, they're not actual, not all of them are planets. So it's the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. They're basically the celestial bodies you can see with your naked eye when you look up in the, in the sky. So the archons, interesting enough, there are seven of them. Some people believe that the word uh, Abraxas uh, itself, we could have a whole video on Abraxas. I've did some, several videos incorporating Abraxas, but uh, the seven letters in Abraxas, I believe each archon can be represented by uh, each, of the, each of the letters that make up the name Abraxas, who is seen as the great archon. Um, Abraxas, of course, is mentioned uh, infamously Carl Jung. I, I mentioned Carl Jung many times uh, with his Abraxas ring that he had. Um, you know, in his quote, uh, it said, if the Pleroma were um, capable of um, having a being, a Braxis would be its manifestation. Uh, it's from Seven Servants of the Dead. The author, of course, Herman Hess from uh, Demian, uh, which is a great, it's a great book. You should all read that. Um, but he has a very interesting quote. So in his quote is that the bird um, fights its way out of the egg 
the egg is the world. Uh, who would be born must first destroy a world. The bird flies to God. This God's name is Abraxas. Um, I really love that that quote too because it relates to the the egg. The egg, of course, is the body without organs, the ultimate potentiality of what we become, and it is essential a world. And you have to destroy that world. You have to destroy that egg in order to be born. Um, in the same way that a cat uh, a caterpillar must destroy its cocoon in order to be born as a butterfly. It's a symbolic uh, death, as we talked about with the tarot, a turning over a new, uh, of a new leaf. We must you know, kill the old in order to, to emerge back into uh, something new or birth something new. So the archons, who are the archons though? So the archons are essentially the, they prevent the light in one soul from leaving the material world. And that is, that is hugely problematic in the Gnostic tradition, right? The, the Gnostic tradition, we have that divine spark, that light in our soul. We want to return to the Pleroma, which the Demiurge cannot return to. So the Archons essentially prevent the light from one's soul uh, from leaving this material world. It traps us to the material world. Um, so in the Nag Hammadi, there is a text called the Hypostasis of the Archons. And it's a, it's a wonderful reinterpretation of Genesis from this Gnostic tradition uh, related to the Demiurge. And as we talked about, one of the main archons is Yaldabaoth. And Yaldabaoth, also known as Samael um, or Saturn, i.e. Cronus, as we discussed. So related to the Chakma, though, related to, to wisdom, in Jewish mysticism, there's an angel, Raziel, who's known as the Keeper of Secrets. And there's a famous book called uh, the Sefer Raziel uh, HaMalak, and the book, so Raziel uh, is very close to God's throne, and he writes down everything that is discussed near God's throne. So the book contains what is said and discussed near God's throne. And Raziel gives Adam and Eve this book after they are expelled out of Eden. And this isn't opposed by God. Some of the, some of the angels uh, see this, and they steal the book away from Adam and Eve, but God hasn't returned to them, which is interesting from a Gnostic perspective. Uh, some people believe this rewrites the Promethean story as it is this angel by, you know, by God's grace that teaches Adam and Eve, uh, or Adam, specifically Adam, I believe, of the knowledge of the world. And so some people believe this is a reinterpretation of the Promethean myth, like, oh, well, the God, you know, is caring. But this is, this is Yahweh we're talking about. And the things that are taught are essentially the material world. We're dealing with the material world here, and that's the great folly in trying to, to use this creation story of Adam and Eve from a Promethean level, I think. Uh, we talked about this before in our previous video, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to elaborate a bit on it. But we talked about the importance of the number seven in alchemy, right? Uh, squaring the circle, and how that's related to the three primes, right? Combined with the four elements, so we get seven. But it relates, it sticks itself to the material world. The whole point of, of Gnosticism is to escape this material world and go back to the immaterial world through the Pleroma, through the divine spark of Sophia. You know, it's kind of ironic because Sophia caused, you know, the problem she created, the, the Demiurge who created the Archons. But that's the whole point. And that's why in, in that alchemy video I made, I talked about the eight um, and Christ, you know, walking on the waters above and below into the celestial heavens, into the immaterial world of the of the pleroma, which is constant, it's a plane of imminence. And so using, I think, sometimes Gnosticism to promote something like Prometheism is essentially problematic because you are talking about material things, material technology, material tools, and it has little to do with Gnostic teachings and the philosophy it, it truly seeks to, to espouse um, upon people. In short, Georgiani does want to combat the Demiurge and the Archons through uh, this sense of Prometheism, but we cannot combat the Archons and the Demiurge through materialistic means. Much like Georgiani's misinterpretation of alchemy, where he interprets alchemy solely from a materialistic perspective of the Seven, we need to ascend beyond the material interpretation of alchemy and take on the more spiritual or immaterial approach in order to return 
to this pleroma, to this plane of imminence uh, on the eternal eight. The material is what keeps us linked eternally to capitalism, which is exactly what the archons intend.